Welcome everybody to the Max Show, another episode where we expose the badass secrets of entrepreneurs all over the world. My name is Chris Stafford, and do we have a truly phenomenal guest today, Miss Christine Carlson. Christine Carlson is responsible for the Don't Sweat the Small Stuff brand. So many books written. She's an inspirational speaker. She is taking this brand, which is so ubiquitous around the world, the Don't Sweat the Small Stuff brand, which she is going to be taking and is going to morph it even into greater things. I can't wait to talk to her more about that. But before we get into our uh, Christine Carlson interview, uh, make sure that you get on to MassiveAbundance.co, sign in, and get some free goodies there. And without further ado, everybody welcome Christine Carlson. Christine Carlson is in the room. How are you doing, Christine? Hey, I'm good, Chris. How are you? Oh, I'm so great. I'm so great. I'm so honored that you have taken the time to join the Mac Show here. We have a lot of aspiring entrepreneurs that are really excited about listening to all of your future stuff. But I thought before we get into that, Chris, it would be okay for you if we talk a little bit about your background, your history, in terms of where you are, uh, where, where you came from. Of course. How what would you like to know about that? <laughs> <laughs> Why don't you just take us through a brief, brief little history in terms of uh, how it affects your business, what you, how you started your business, and how the whole uh, Don't Sweat the Small Stuff series started. Okay, well, um, the Don't Sweat the Small Stuff um, series was sort of your typical overnight success story. It took Richard about 10 books in 10 years mm -hmm. to get to that book, that which was a massive bestseller. And um, that that book probably far surpassed anything he ever dreamed of creating and certainly anything that we ever dreamed that we would contribute to the world, actually. Mm -hmm. um, Richard would have been considered one of the first branding authors. The word branding really didn't exist up mm -hmm. until um, men are from Mars, women are from Venus, mm -hmm. don't sweat the small stuff, chicken soup for the soul. Before that, there was a very iconic kind of um, era with you know Wayne Dyer and and all of the, um, we call them fathers and sisters of the, you know, the whole thing. Mm -hmm. and, and they really began branding after that. So as far as how the brand grew, you know, the brand grew very organically, actually. Mm -hmm. I mean, it, it wasn't the super planned thing. We didn't have the internet. Mm -hmm. You know, it was done very homegrown out of our office and, and really just about, expanding the idea of what don't sweat the small stuff how you could take this content and repurpose it into calendars day books mm -hmm. um, audios pbs specials all of that kind of thing so um you know it's it's a 15 maybe 15 year old brand now so mm -hmm. it's it's been around for a while and i have to say i'm really grateful that um, the don't sweat books are considered you know we still have a, a large portion of shelf space mm -hmm. and what is interesting for me now is to try and transcend this new time period and move into ascend into the internet and that's mm -hmm. where I'm at as an author um, having lost Richard six years ago I'm looking to um, keep his work alive mm -hmm. in the on the internet and, and use that platform and, and figure out how to take a bricks and mortar brand and turn it into an internet brand interesting interesting well, you know, it's so fascinating to me, Chris, because, you know, obviously you had this devastating loss. You know, your husband passed away six years ago. And, you know, after getting over the grief, which I don't even know, I mean, it's even to say getting over is probably too strong of a word, but having to deal with the grief and everything else that you had to deal with that, was it immediate that it came into your mind that you definitely wanted to continue this legacy of his? Or was that something that took some time? You no, know, it was very immediate for me. Um, I think what happens for people when you have a very sudden, devastating loss, a lot mm -hmm. of times, you know, there's really just two two paths you can take, mm -hmm. and and one is basically pull the covers over your head and and lay down and and not do anything, or there's the other path that really is like searching and creating and sort of and going for life. Like, mm -hmm. and I think, you know, I've, I'm a person and I was with a person, Richard was that kind of person where we lived every day as if it could be our last. We lived very passionately. Mm -hmm. We're very passionately in love. And I certainly didn't want to let go of my life. 
even after I lost half of my life, you know, mm -hmm. it was like, I really grasped on to life. And part of that was, um, carrying on for him. Mm -hmm. So it, it, it fed my soul and it fed my life to know that I not only had the responsibility now to live for me, but I have the responsibility to live for him. Right, right. And initially that's really incredible. Like that's like to grab onto that is sort of like grabbing onto the, the wings of an airplane, you know, like, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> like it really helped me a lot. And, and it's, it's been a huge responsibility, mm -hmm. but one that I feel that Richard really prepared me to take on. So that's amazing. That, that is an amazing journey that you you're going through and that you have gone through. What is it? I mean, because we have a lot of entrepreneurs that are going to be watching this. What is it, yeah. Chris, that what are the special challenges that you sort of face in having to take on this thing? You mentioned, you know, grabbing onto a flying airplane. What were specifically some of the challenges an entrepreneur bringing this thing up online? Well, I mean, I really, I see entrepreneurism as looking for the need in the marketplace mm -hmm. and, and also um, creating your own individuation in mm -hmm. the marketplace, that that's sort of the nature of, of what I think of entrepreneurial business as. Mm -hmm. And so right now, you know, for me as um, Christine Carlson, you know, I'm rebranding myself right now. It's taken me the six years to figure out what my message is, you know, or even people would say, what's your mission? I'm like, um, I don't know to survive, you know, <laughs> like, but now I really see that I have a mission and a mm -hmm. message and, you know, being extremely clear about that is really important. And mm -hmm. right now, of course, it's all about creating a community and a tribe. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. the more clear that you can be about what you're here to say, mm -hmm. which I am clearly here to show that people can make it through change and transition of any kind mm -hmm. and choose their next best life. Right. And that that's clearly what my life is about at this point. It's, it's what it's always been about, but now it's my message because it's my life and my, my life is my message. That so is beautiful. That is beautiful. Yeah. That is great. You know, it's interesting to me, Chris, because, you know, you are, if you look at christinecarlson.com, which is by the time this airs, it's going to be a whole brand new site. So I'm really encouraging people, and that'll be in the show notes, to go to christinecarlson.com. But if you read about yourself, you just have such a fascinating background on what you have been through and what you're doing right now. You touched on your mission, which I'd like to get into a little bit more, because you're, you're an author. You have written an amazing book, which is called Heartbroken Open, which one reviewer, I just have to read this, it really struck me, shares Chris Carlson shares her story of grief and transformation with raw honesty, eloquence, and humor. And I just, I just love those words. It's just beautiful. So you're an author. You have, you've got a new book out, a newer book called Don't Sweat the Small Stuff Moms. You're an inspirational speaker. I know you've got some really big things coming to plan. How do you identify yourself and how is that part of your mission? Well, um, you mean, how do I identify myself in the marketplace? Exactly. Well. You know, I identify myself kind of with my um, new column that I'm writing called Living the Big Stuff. You know, mm -hmm. I've, I've created sort of a bridge with that statement between the brand that Richard and I are known for oh, I love that. And, and what I'm doing now, which, you know, I have to say my only bone of contention with Richard is that it's not all small stuff. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe for him where he is, but, <laughs> it, it, you know, not for me. So anyways, so I... I'm, that's how I'm identifying myself. Mm -hmm. um, we have an interesting situation, or I have one, is, that is that I have a brand that's so much bigger than an individual. You know, it's, it's more of a world-owned brand on some level. Mm -hmm. it's, it's ubiquitous, you mm -hmm. know, it's huge. And mm -hmm. so I'm just really trying to identify um, Richard's and my individual names and work with the brand so that I can capture the audience and give them the portal of, you know, you love this brand, you love what this philosophy is, and, and I'm now the living expert of this philosophy and, mm -hmm. and very able and capable of speaking on it because I, I live it, and I live it in the biggest way possible. Mm -hmm. You know, who knew that I was going to be Richard's major test case for does this work? <laughs> does it. this dose with the small stuff philosophy really work? <laughs> well, I am living proof, yes, that it does. <laughs> the truth is you really don't sweat the small stuff when you're living the big stuff. I love that. I love that. So you're making this transition. I mean, I love that you're going to be using your name. 
uh, and taking the brand Don't Sweat the Small Stuff and turning turning it into, is that correct? The big stuff? Well, not turning it into. The, the Don't Sweat the Small Stuff brand will remain, I mean, I believe that it's a brand that will stand the history of time. I uh-huh. believe that it's a brand that every 10 years, um, there's a new group of people that will benefit from this brand because mm-hmm. it's timeless wisdom. So, I see. no, I'm, I'm really just looking to take these principles into um, kind of a different level for people. Like, how do you take these same principles that we wrote about um, in life to turn life, you know, because the strategies are all about creating a better life, mm-hmm. right? So right. Um, living the big stuff is more about how do you do the same thing and change and transition? How do you give yourself space to heal mm-hmm. and then realize that it has to be a choice to move forward in your life? It has to be a choice to live your next best life. Mm-hmm. And there's so many people, whether you're, you know, in change or transition over loss or you're in change and transition because you're a boomer right now. Mm-hmm. You know, you're actually, you actually are hitting your fifties and mm-hmm. you're like, geez, okay, now what, you know, and that's really, those are the people that I'm really most interested in speaking to. Excellent. Excellent. And I'm turning 50 this year, by the way. Hey, congratulations. (laughs) (laughs) I've been there. Call me about it. (laughs) Yeah. So, you know, it's, it's a pivotal, it's definitely a pivotal uh, landmark year for a lot of reasons. Absolutely. Absolutely. And as an entrepreneur right now in the marketplace, and it sounds like you're making some wonderful transitions, and I want to talk a little bit about some of your future plans, what, but what are your, first of all, your biggest challenges that you're facing right now as an entrepreneur? Well, the biggest challenge is to figure out um, really the branding part of the internet, mm-hmm. again, for me. It's, it's really how do I use the internet as a tool to help more people and to expand our messaging. Mm-hmm. And um, and that's my biggest challenge. You know, there's there's a lot of components to that. There's a huge investment um, to make, a monetary investment to doing that. I mean, every time you redesign your website, you know, you're talking about a huge investment. And so, I'm, you know, really right now, I'm really searching out the right partnerships. I'm really mm-hmm. interested in creating powerful partnerships with people. Mm-hmm. And, um, and I think that's the best way to do it. Like we are living in a very collaborative time as far as the internet goes. Mm -hmm. And in fact, I'm launching a program this spring in May, um, don't sweat the small stuff for moms virtual conference with, um, Entheos, which who is Brian Johnson from philosopher notes. And I just love their whole team. And so I'm doing all the front end interviewing of, of the 42 to 50 experts on conscious parenting and, Mm -hmm women's self self care in mind, body and spirit. And then he'll be doing the back end support work, the back end marketing. Which to me, that's a perfect partnership because I know how to interview people and have mm-hmm. a great conversation. Mm-hmm. I don't wanna be a teleconference specialist. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I don't wanna do that stuff. You know, right. and that's probably the most um the, going from the old business model, which was really to write a book and launch a book. Mm-hmm to and then write another book and launch another book Mm -hmm. to writing a book and then expanding on the philosophy in different ways is is a totally different business model Mm -hmm. and so because again i know how to write books that's what i've learned how to do but doing all the other stuff and you know and i'm also seeing that it can be kind of a racket you know Mm -hmm. too like you have to be careful because there's my authors can spend a lot of money, mm-hmm. you know, and, and you have to really look at what are you willing to do and why are you doing it? And, and it's, it's quite, that's a huge test. You go to the Brendan Burchard conference and it's absolutely wonderful, mm-hmm. but you walk out of there just going, Wah! <laughs> <laughs> I know. you know, you walk out of there just with your eyes crossed, like, Oh my God, which one of these things am I supposed to know how to do? You right. know? Exactly. Exactly. Well, that's interesting. So the living the big stuff, and also the teleconference are both going to be launched this spring. Is that correct? Yes. And well, I'm working on, I'm kind of doing both at the same time. Mm-hmm. Um, so I'm really expanding um, what I can offer moms as a community mm-hmm. by doing the teleconference. And then I'm writing a column. I'm launching a column through Aspire magazine, mm-hmm. um, Living the Big Stuff, which then I'll put on my website. And that will eventually roll over into a new book and then that will eventually roll in and roll over into a seminar program Mm -hmm. and who knows where else that's going to go but i kind of see it as seven guiding principles to living the big stuff 
Great, great. And all that information for both will be on christinecarlson.com? Yes. Great, great. Yeah. Question for you. Um, you went through this traumatic loss, and you really had to sort of step through this journey. As a part of that journey, did you um, develop any skills or did you uh, develop any kind of strength that you were able to carry forward in your business? In other words, right now as an entrepreneur, do you find it easier to do certain things or care about certain or maybe not care about certain things as an entrepreneur because you had walked through this journey? Oh, that's a great question. Yeah, I'd actually say I'm a very fearless person. Mm. That that I don't I don't um I can walk up on a platform and I'm like, you know what, I have lived through one of the hardest things that human beings I mean, I think there's only one harder loss to live through and that's your child. Mm. To lose a child than to lose a spouse that you adore and that, that you know, where you were happy for twenty two years like we were. So mm. I've endured something that most people can't imagine, you know, and, and I, I, so I feel the same way about myself. Like mm -hmm. I thought, I think, wow, <laughs> why would I be afraid <laughs> of anything else? You know uh -huh. what I mean? So I think there's a way in which I'm able to really give myself to my work and my message very fearlessly mm -hmm. and, and very authentically. The mm -hmm. authenticity that this experience of losing Richard brought to me was incredible. Mm -hmm. And it's not that I wasn't authentic before, but there's a way in which when you go through so such a raw loss that you everything in you is emptied out, everything. Yeah. So yeah. your past is emptied, your present is completely, you are completely present, you are empty to your core. And with that is there's an annihilation of your ego that happens too. Mm -hmm. And, you know, you're very identified, I was very identified as Richard's wife and partner. Mm -hmm. So that part of me died. And then this whole new part rebirth, which was really who I really am. And mm -hmm. I think that authenticity in this kind of climate, in this kind of world is what people really are striving. They want, mm -hmm. they want to know that the person that's speaking to them is really speaking from their heart. Yes. And, and I, I find it really easy to live in my heart now. Mm -hmm. You know, I, I don't, I'm not that I didn't before, but it, I'm more embracing mm -hmm. and more expanded in this new version of me. Right, right. You know, it's really apparent to me too, because meeting you in person and seeing you on YouTube, and I think like you mentioned, the whole internet age right now, what it's allowed us to do, well, the biggest thing it's allowed us to do is become transparent. And the yes. people that are the most transparent, like yourself, and it's really evident when you see you in person or on video is it really people love that. It really resonates with people. And so that's one of the reasons why you're such a huge success. So oh, I applaud that. You. I applaud that. But now you're talking to a brand new entrepreneur who's watching this right now. And what would be like one of the one or two biggest pieces of advice that you would give an entrepreneur entrepreneur? Well, it just goes back to authenticity. I, I don't care what you do in this world, but the more that you can embrace who you really are and you can share that mm -hmm. from your core without fear, that there's nothing. You are going to shine in a way that other people can't. And I would advise anybody of any age that the more that they can be themselves, you mm -hmm. know, there's that great saying, um, be yourself, everyone else is already taken. <laughs> I think it's Oscar Wilde who said that. So. You know, you just remember that uh -huh. what you have to offer, as long as you get really clear on who you really are, no matter what you're doing in business, because really people buy people. Mm -hmm. they, they buy what you have to say, what you, the feeling, they're going to choose you over somebody else or choose what you have to offer over somebody else because they like you right. and they know you and they trust you. And the only people that you can really trust are the people who are really coming at life from that authentic expression. Exactly. Exactly. And really what we're doing, what all of us are doing out there in the world is really bringing our own perspective into whatever it is, whatever our mission is. And if you try to hide that for whatever reason, you know, it, or if you try to be something that you're not, exactly. you know, like if you try to, you know, because that's another thing, especially in, in our work as, as authors and, and in the self-help world, you know, it's like, it'll come around, you know, if you don't walk, if you don't walk your talk, it mm -hmm. comes around to you. And, and you have to, you know, it's hard because nobody is a hundred percent authentic all the time right. because we do have those things called egos and, right. and we do have 
those barriers, you know, sometimes, or, or sometimes somebody just, we don't like them, you know, like somebody <laughs> sometimes, what if I got on this call and I didn't like you, you know, I mean, I have to hide that, right? Because right, it's like exactly. we're on an interview. I do like you though, Chris. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, Chris. <laughs> But what if I didn't? I mean, I have been in that position before where I had some nasty PMS, you know, right, and I right, and I right. and I just didn't like the interviewer, you know, uh -huh. and and I'm not very good at hiding things like that. I'm uh -huh. really not, you know. If I if I don't like you, you're gonna probably know it because I'm not. I'm just I'm not very good at hiding it, you know. Uh -huh, and right. and I, but I think that's just something that you know, as a as an individual that really knows themselves, if you can just be yourself, that's what I'd say is the most important thing. Right. Right. That, that's that's amazing but you are such an inspirational speaker Chris, and you have so much great material out there Richard has generated so much great material but you know you mentioned PMS you must have bad days oh yeah <laughs> you must but, have, you you must, know, it's funny must, I, I, do, I do I do? mine are mine are probably um more hormonal related, which uh -huh. I, my good friend Sarah Gottfried just came out with the hormone cure. Yes, yes. <laughs> so I'm in love with that book, by the way. <laughs> a little plug for Sarah. I mean, really, honestly, I think as um, human beings, we all have low days. And right, right. You know, the point is not that you're always going to be happy. It's really bouncing back. And the quickest way you can get back to what we call just being in the center, the ground floor, you know, mm -hmm. being graceful when low and grateful when high. That's really, that's a don't sweat. That's right. a Richard Carlson term. <laughs> I love being it. graceful when low and grateful when high. Right, right, exactly. That's so funny that you mentioned Sarah because I just met Sarah a couple of weeks ago. Oh, you did? Yeah, she awesome? I interviewed David. David, for all of you who have not have not seen my interview uh, last week, uh, which I aired, David is the, uh, the founder of the lead green building certification movement and uh, it's just an amazing he's amazing they're a great couple talk about a renaissance guy david Gottfried, yeah. and then his wife sarah my god what a powerhouse Jeez yeah indeed. but specifically you know you're having a down day and you're not feeling what do you go back to david's writings do you what do you do to richards i'm sorry richards <laughs> you know, brain. Do you go back? yeah do you go do you read about green building <laughs> yeah. No, when, but when you're, <laughs> yeah, when you're specifically, what specifically do you do to sort of like bring yourself up? Because I was thinking about this yesterday. We all as entrepreneurs, and we have those days where we think to ourselves, oh my God, what was I thinking? Is that, is that a really good idea? Do I, do I want to give that presentation this week? What do you do specifically to really sort of ramp yourself up? Specifically, um, to be really honest with you, I don't make, um, like, a, I don't make a big deal out of it. Like, mm -hmm. honestly, I don't, I already know that low points are low points. That's mm -hmm. all they are. I don't, I don't really pay too close attention to my low thoughts. Mm -hmm. For example, um, Richard and I, we, we really believe that you have high moods and low moods. And when you're in a low mood, you just have to write it out. Like, mm -hmm. like we always said, just write out the low mood, the low mood days. Don't make a big deal. Don't have marriage conversations. Don't talk to somebody that you're upset with that day. Uh -huh. You know, make the decision to try and create some space in your life if you can. Mm -hmm. um, but mostly just write it out. Don't make it a big deal. Right. You know, it's not, it's not going to, it's just going to pass like everything else passes. Just don't and, give it the power. And the way you be graceful in it is, is you just, you don't, you know, you don't entertain mm -hmm. like the why too much mm -hmm. because the why could be something totally different than you think when you're in that low space. Mm. You know, you, you just don't want to make it a really big deal. That's like the biggest thing I could tell you right now. That's great. That's great. Great information for all of us. You don't sweat the small stuff. stuff. <laughs> don't sweat the small stuff. I love it. I love it. That is terrific. Chris, I really appreciate the time. This has gone way too fast, but I mean, the information that you've imparted to all of our entrepreneurs, our treps has been invaluable and I appreciate it so much. Oh, thank you. Thank you, Chris. Bye. Thank All right. You so take much. care. Bye. Yeah. Hey, thanks, everybody, for joining today's show. Chris Carlson was amazing. I love talking to Christine Carlson. She has so many pearls of wisdom. I really enjoyed all her little all her little tips but uh, you know especially for being such a inspirational speaker and having such a ubiquitous brand don't sweat the small stuff and she's even gonna morph that into amazing other things all of which can be found at christinecarlson.com a phenomenal woman I really enjoyed talking to her I hope that you enjoy talking to her as well so let me know what you think send send me some love down down below 
Let me know what you think about Chris. Let me know what you think about me. Let me know what you think about my really cool polo shirt from Argentina. <laughs> Anyways, you guys, make sure you get on to MassiveAbundance.co. Get yourself some free goodies. Thanks so much for joining us today, and may Massive Abundance be yours. Take care. Thank <laughs> you.